Some games are really long. This is something we actually use to measure games worth sometimes. How many hours of entertainment did I get out of it? But would I rather play a game that's short and great or a game that's long and good? This is a question that not only you and I are asking, Game developers are asking it too. Sometimes the amount of quality is dependent on the length of the game, sometimes not. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on GameRanks, we ask the question, game length versus quality, what do you prefer? Now I think a really good starting point for something like this is the idea of an open world game versus the idea of a linear level-based game. Because this difference in genre is often the difference between these two things. It is labor intensive to make an open world that is detailed and amazing. Hell, it's more labor intensive to make a good open world than it is to make a very detailed linear world. Good level design in terms of a linear game is, well, linear. It doesn't have to go off in every direction. You don't have to be able to make a million different choices. You don't have to be able to run in any direction for however long. And in an open world, you do. Now, there are certainly linear games that are very long and open world games that are shorter than those games. So I don't want to make this the end all be all distinction here, but I think it's really good to lay some groundwork understanding that a lot of the trappings of either of these two types of things will contribute to what someone wants depending on their personal taste. For instance, Devil May Cry 5 or the recent Resident Evil remakes, they're not particularly long games, they're not particularly open either. However, these games are designed in a manner that flows so wonderfully and have a certain level of replayability that often a million side quests that get repetitive and sometimes feel ridiculous, don't. I don't even know if I need to provide examples of that. I think we've seen so many games with that exact problem at this point. So on the subject of length, something that can affect the quality of the game that literally doesn't change the content at all is if certain things are optional. If these things that I've mentioned that can be a problem are not really there on a mandatory basis per se. Like, let's say the core game in an open world is really good. They've done a great job with the story, the gameplay mechanics are phenomenal, and the world itself, be it the actual geometry or atmosphere, in some cases I want to spend more time in that world. This then causes me to go ahead and say, well, maybe these kind of busy work quests aren't really the worst thing. I'm taking in the local flavor, so to speak, because there's always some spin on it, whether it's aesthetic or mechanical. There's a reason they made Assassin's Creed Odyssey. There's a reason they made Witcher 3. Everybody has their own ideas as to what something should be, and Witcher 3 is a game that does a phenomenal job with all of its side content. I do tend to want to do Witcher 3 side content. But the way it happens in Witcher 3 as compared to Assassin's Creed Odyssey is you often wander into it and it just happens. It's not that you were obligated to it or sent to it or made to do it. Instead, it just feels like something happening in the world that you can take part in. I think Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a great game and I really enjoy it. However, I think it kind of makes a lot of stuff mandatory that shouldn't be given how sometimes intrinsically linked that content is to the leveling system. It's not necessarily that these side quests are all of a low quality. Some are, I'm not gonna say that they all are bangers or anything, but when they're not optional, they seem basically entirely there to extend the length of a game. Hell, even the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which isn't the most open world game you've ever played in your life, still has a bit of a side quest problem in some people's eyes. I've seen more than a few people levy the criticism against this game that it does everything it can to stretch out what is kind of a 20 hour game into a 30 hour game. But again, here comes back the justification, I'm there for it. That world is so effectively realized, the characters so well written and voiced, I don't care how tedious it is, I enjoy it personally. But here is our first encounter with the words personal taste. This is one of those subjects that you really can't avoid this. Some of us just really prefer something we can switch off our brain and plow into 
might be kind of repetitive, but the mechanics are enjoyable compared to something that is very deep and demands a lot of you emotionally or mentally. And then there's also, of course, monetary value. A lot of people really don't like the idea they spend $60 for a 15-hour game, which is something we see quite often. I did mention replayability. That's important with a game that length. But for someone with exploration on their mind, seeing the sights, absorbing flavor, like I called it a moment ago, $60 might be too much, even if that 15 hours is jam-packed. In some cases, an empty open world can actually be a contributing factor to the quality of the game. It really depends on how the game contextualizes it. For instance, a number of action RPGs have fairly barren worlds, but they build the atmosphere so well it's not that important. But then again, who are you as well? Where are you in life? If I'm a teenager and I'm looking to fill up all of the abundance of time I have, I'm probably going to want games that are longer. If I'm married with kids, I'm probably going to want more bang for my buck in less time. There's also just a certain level of patience that I have for a game now. If a game takes forever to get going, I have a bit of an aversion to it nowadays because that's telling me this game is spending as much time as it can before we get to the real stuff, essentially so it can take more time. What it really comes down to is the difference between a marathon and a sprint. In a sprint, you go very hard for a short period of time. You should be pretty tired afterwards because you packed all of that work into a short period of time. A marathon, on the other hand, really isn't specific. You could walk a marathon if you really wanted to, but a lot of people take them at a fairly leisurely pace just to say that they've done it, to get some exercise, to participate in something. And also it should be said that just packing a lot of content into a short period of time isn't necessarily quality either. Something can be total nonsense and short. Not every sprint is a good one, you see. Some games don't actually even have a lot of content. They randomly generate content and it's kind of repetitive and just mechanically great, and sometimes you can play that for a long period of time. Often roguelikes are pretty simple in actual content, it's just that they're fun. The same goes for a lot of competitive gaming. Esports is technically designed to go on forever, and yet there are a lot of people who play that type of game and have significantly more fun than I do with my little 12-hour stories. Or maybe not, I don't know, maybe I have a hell of a time with those stories. Maybe I've figured out how to enjoy games better than anyone else, I don't know. Probably not. But the distinction I think we're having to draw here is ultimately one of quality, period. Yes, taste has a big factor in what kind of game you're going to want, whether it be an open-ended, long-form title with a lot of side quests, or a linear game where they pack a lot of story and events into a line that you follow. But still, I think the interesting thing you're going to find is that, one way or the other, it really is about quality. I told you a short game can be bad, and it probably sounded like a slightly redundant statement, like, ugh, game length isn't actually what tells you if the game is good or bad. But when I see people argue about this topic, it often devolves into that. Long games versus short games, linear versus open. And that's really just not it. It's just that what denotes quality in either of these types of games is actually kind of different. If I'm playing an open-ended game with a lot of side quests, it really is about if it sells me on the world. If I'm playing a shorter game with a lot of events, character development, and whatever packed into a short period of time, then ultimately it's kind of about level design and if that story is worth going through. Because let's be frank, atmosphere is usually better in a game where they don't have to craft an atmosphere that goes on forever. So, the answer to the question, game length versus quality, which do I prefer, actually isn't really easy to answer because you're gonna get me into games that are much longer than they need to be on face value just because I like them. It's really inconsistent, actually. And the thing that we argue about isn't necessarily the real thing that matters because the difference between a quality side quest and a bad side quest might simply be context. 
Like, a lot of the side quests in Spider-Man on PS4 are pretty similar to a lot of the side quests in every other open world game, but, or let's not forget climbing towers in Horizon Zero Dawn like every other game. This stuff works in those games just a little bit better because everything does. So we can't really nail down which one is better per se, but you can decide which one you like more. But ultimately, you're also kind of saying which one you consider to be quality, regardless of game length. So which is it? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day, so click subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.